Oops, technical glitch. I thought I knew how to do this, but I don't. Hey, everybody, it's Internet Marketing Unleashed. I'm Scott Patton, the Dean of Blogonomics and Podology. Glad that you're here. I am so excited. I've got one of my best Mexican friends from the United States visiting us today. He's a, he helps high performers and business experts become the leader in their marketplace using video, working with leaders committed to investing in their business. And he's been down in Mexico for a number of years. And I'm so excited because when I was down in Playa del Karma, they uh, brought me into their home. They treated me like family. It was just such a wonderful uh, week or two. I forget now how, how long I was there. It was way too short. And uh, one of the reasons that I'm excited to have him on is because he's traveled to a few places. He's been all over the United States. And he's somewhat settled down in Mexico now. We want to talk about what it's like when the world shuts down and it doesn't really matter because you've set yourself up so well that uh, life continues pretty much as normal. Well, maybe not going out as much or going to some of the places that you used to go to. But as far as business goes, uh, business has been great. And I've been finding the same thing. We want to share a little bit about that. And uh, he's... He's gone to the university, got his college degree. He's had brick and mortar businesses. He's had three patents, which I didn't know anything about. Hopefully he tells us a little bit more. And he started a number of businesses. He's sought uh, VC funding, which is Viet Cong funding. No, it's uh, uh, venture capital funding. He's developed children's book apps, which I didn't know anything about before either. And he's taught digital marketing, social media. He's I'm a wonderful speaker, been around the world telling everybody all this amazing stuff, and he focuses on video. So with that, welcome to the show, Rick Toon. How are you doing? Hi, I'm doing great, man. How are you? I'm wonderful. So I'm here in Medellin, Colombia. I arrived uh, first week in March. I was only going to be here two weeks. They closed the border, shut down all the flights three days before I was supposed to go to Ecuador, and... Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Who knows? But I've enjoyed the uh, April, May, June, July uh, into August that I've been here. I'm fortunate in that I was able to find a place that is the on the ninth floor of an eight floor building. And so just over there, we have a I have a, a ter terraza, a big terrace. And after a couple of weeks, I said to the landlord, you know what you need up here is a hammock. And he said, oh, yeah, great idea. I said, I'll buy you a hammock. And he looks at me and I says, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I have no clue how to get a hammock, hammocka. And so he said, okay. And then I thought he forgot about it, you know, because people will say stuff. And did he even understand me? Uh, you know, my Spanish is so bad. And, and about uh, two or three weeks later, he says, uh, it's arriving tomorrow. And so we put it together, and I'm now in paradise because I can sit out there, sun a little bit. I can, at the end of the day, when the sun is down, I watch the Australias, the stars. And uh, as you can see, I've been taking Spanish lessons. So I'm, I'm showing off the, don't ask me to count to 100. I can and I will. So I don't want, I don't want to take up a lot of our time. But, but things, aside from the fact that we're like locked down, I can't leave the city. Certain days, I, <clears throat> I'm not supposed to leave the, the apartment and go for a walk even. Uh, other than that, you know, this has been really, really a nice time. And that's kind of the contrarian perspective because most people are talking about how awful this whole quarantine is. And I have to say, Columbia's pollution has dropped like 80%. The, it is so quiet on the days where the whole city is locked down. I'm thinking that they should continue this forever because usually like there's big motorcycles and noisy cars and buses and and then today is a holiday that's a festival and so they close the city down for saturday sunday and monday and when i listen i can hear like one car and i've got a very busy street just a couple blocks down so um, i don't want to talk about the benefits of quarantine but part of me is saying this isn't all that bad so how are things in mexico rick 
Well, we feel the same way, you know. We, I mean, we've been here for a couple of years now, and we kind of got stuck here. We didn't get stuck here at all. We actually, people ask us, we're going to go back. It's like, well, we have no home to go back to. You know, our families don't want us there. I don't want to go stay with my son for three months or five months or whatever. I mean, I love him dearly, but let's be real. And we're in this great place. We've got great neighbors. We have this great apartment building. They shut down a lot. The city is like shut down. Right now, the beaches are still closed. Like they arrest you if you go on the beach. I mean, it's they're taking it pretty serious, but they they loosen up and then they get tight again. Then they loosen up and they get tight again. And the bars we have, so right over there, about a hundred yards, are two bars. Friday, Saturday nights, we can hear them, and they play until two a.m. Is it loud? No, you can still go to sleep, but but you hear them. But now the quarantine, they, they shut at like eleven o'clock. Bam, there is no sound whatsoever. The street is dead silent. And they're allowing tourists here. Well, Mexico is one of the few countries that the Americans can still come into on a right. tourist. Visa. And they're coming in, but they're not coming in in droves. I mean, August is always a slow month anyway. Right. But it's, it's quiet. 30% of the occupancy in restaurants, you can't open a bar unless you serve food. You got to order the food first. It's got to show on the ticket, the timestamp of how things happen. They check your temperature everywhere. I mean, they're, they're as diligent as they can be without going overboard. Wow. Part of me is like, you know, yeah, no, I don't want to get sick, but I also don't want to stop life. Right. Absolutely. So, so we've been continuing to move on, and like you said, you know, our business hasn't changed much. We had a few a few client dips and a few client rises, and other people are doing more now because of the right. fact that they can't get out, and so they're doing, relying on online more now because you know, Jen, I mean, you know, Jen and I, she, she's the writer, and I'm the video guy. So between the two of us, we kind of cover a lot of the space, yeah, of the online marketing world and what people are actually doing to get noticed to deliver. And I did uh, a thing recently for a healthcare company that probably would have had to happen this way anyway, but we recorded six families around the world um, for this healthcare initiative. And what we did wow. was I, I sent them a basic little PDF about how to look good, how to go away, how to sit in front of a window, how to clean up the background so it wasn't messy. You know, the basics. Because to me, good videos are about the basics. It's not about... What camera do you have and all that? All that matters at a certain level, but at this level, it doesn't matter. And so everybody did it. We got this great video. I, I was directing via Zoom, you know, from my right. Caribbean shore home. And there were six people around the world, and we edited the whole thing together, and everybody loved it. They thought it was great. Awesome. Awesome. So, you know, had it not been for the pandemic, how, would they have even considered using Zoom for that? Would they have scratched the whole project because – it sounds undoable. So how we can't do that now? It's acceptable, right? Right. Yeah. There's a lot of things that were not. Uh, uh, for example, you had to come into an office, even though all the work you did, you did on a computer. You could just easily have done it at home. Uh, people wanted you there. They wanted to watch you. And now it's kind of like we don't want you anywhere near me now. <laughs> yeah. So stay home. And so, do you think that's going to have a huge? Uh, what sort of impact do you think that's going to have? On, uh, on you know the future of work in the United States, for example? I think it's gonna have a huge impact. And I think it's something that a lot of us have discovered several years ago. I mean, you've been traveling the world for a while. Yeah, We left, uh, two and a half years ago, we left the States and we go back and forth, but we haven't actually lived there in two and a half years. We've been, you know, in our suitcases. The reality is, is that even there, before we ever left, uh, Jen made this revelation one day and I started following it. Like she stopped doing coffee meetings with people. Let's go meet for coffee. Well, coffee meeting is 10 or $20 parking two hours a time to go see if what you have to offer is something they can do before they have to decide if they can afford it. Before. Like, man, how about we jump on a call and do that? Well, you don't need to be in person for a call. You don't need to be in person for so much stuff. Right. But people have always expected the coffee meeting means so much, your relationship building. And I get it. I, no one likes people more than me. No one goes out to hang out with people more than I do. We had a seven hour brunch on Sunday. You would have loved. <laughs> oh my gosh. We had people from all over the place. We were the only Americans there, and there was no Mexicans there, people from everywhere else. 
and we had such a they're all here work everybody's working online one guy sells fertilizer somebody else sell, has a telemarketing company for real estate agents in europe i mean it's like the variety of options available now are so vast yes that i think it's going to change so much and to the point that my daughter who is in school she's in her senior year of college uh, in kinesiology and she wants to be a pediatric uh, physical therapist. Well, now she's changed her mind because she's realized the physical therapists, a lot of them weren't working during this pandemic because right. some of the stuff is not considered essential. And then she's also realized she wants to travel and she wants to do this. And then she starts looking at that pricing and what people are making. And so now she's really thinking seriously about being a health coach to gym, gymnasts in specific, oh, doing nice. a lot online and then doing in person events when she can not every day having a facility. So of right. course dad is like pumping her up, telling her all kinds of stuff, going, okay, only read this book. Don't read all the other 30 people are gonna tell you to read. All, you know, cause I've, <laughs> I've done it all, right? Right. I can sure this, this success here. Sign up for a free convert kit right now because you're gonna need it. Sign up for, you know, Groove is the big thing right now, right? Sign up for the free right. account. Just let it sit there, but just sign up for the free account for now. Yeah, just in case <laughs> it isn't free tomorrow. Right. So, you okay. know. But she's, but she, you know, 20 years old and thinking like, how do I exist in this world on my terms and still make a living on my terms without being physically tied to any location on my terms? Right. Yeah. Uh, we could say there's two types of people in the world. There's the people that put down roots. They really like their neighborhood where they live. They're, they, they're mm -hmm. going to be in that house for 50 years, that sort of thing. And then there's people that before, like 30 years ago, like for me, for example, I was a store manager in a grocery chain. You would think that that would be like, you've got one store and you're there for 20 or 30 or 40 years. Right. No, I was changing cities every three years, right? Like medium sized cities in the countryside until I made it to the big city. And then you'd be going, I'm sure what they did was they looked at a map of the city and they said, Scott lives there. We're going to put him <laughs> Uh, you know, because I was spending hours driving to and from work, and it was just like insane. Like, why don't you put me somewhere near? Oh, no, because then you'll never move. Like, well, why would I want to move? <laughs> you get stale. Yeah. But anyway, now, I, but I, now, I we, think so many now we decide. Are you know, right. there's so many things about that that are different. My daughter goes to a college, and she lives right next to campus, but they also have a second campus that's 40 minutes away. Last semester in the spring, she had four classes, one a day at that other college campus. Oh. So it was 40 minutes away each direction plus the class. Talk about pain in the ass. So when they, they went online for everything, and she had online schooling in high school because she was an athlete, so she already was well-versed in the whole online thing. And right. she, I said, what are you doing with all your free time? She said, well, I built a website. I've created this checklist. I'm doing this. I've got a, I've got a, a tripwire, a lead wire. What do you call that thing, Dad? So she's like, I just took that time and figured out all this other stuff that I've been talking about for years. Because Dad wow. does not like to do it. But I think wow, a, lot, a lot of people, yeah, exactly. A lot of people are trying to figure this thing out now. Yep. Yep. And, and I, I think it's I think it's going to be cool. huge. Yeah. And, and I was going to say it's going to be infinite because yeah. even though all these people are coming in, we're all thinking of different ways of doing different things. And all of a sudden this pie, if you will, is just, it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, you've got AI coming and all these other technologies that are just going to be, you know, the, well, the, the gaming world is just absolutely amazing. Right. So there's yeah. all these different areas that people can go into that uh, you know you're never going to be digitally stepping on anybody's toes if you don't if you don't want to. You know, I used to when people used to say, you know, how do you make money online? There's so many people selling stuff online. Well, I'm not really selling stuff per se. I mean, I am, but I really more sell the knowledge. You know, three thousand hours is right. what I'm selling. But way back when, when I was still living in Hollywood, and you do that was on TV commercials mostly. Car commercials. Think about how many cars there are. How many major brand names are there, and how many types of cars are there? You know what a car does? It gets you from point A to point B. That's what a car does. 
Yeah. Why do we need 800 models to get you from point A to point B? Well, somebody thinks we do, and obviously the numbers show it because those people are not dumb and they're only looking at profit numbers, you know, right. however they want to cook the books, but they're looking at it from a, this is a viable option standpoint, not let's try it and see what happens and, you know. That's right, they, that's right. So I think the fact that everybody does so many different things, and everybody does it their way. And what works with you resonates with you. What doesn't resonate with you? What do you like? What don't you like? You yeah. know, how do you perceive it? How do you talk to people? Yeah, all of, all of that stuff. And I think the other thing, too, is so when I was a grocery store manager, I would have 22,000 customers go through my till a week. And the margins were like 5, 10, 15 percent, 25 if it was a deli item. So it was a high volume, low profit business. When you get online, it's the opposite. Like I can live quite, first of all, I don't have the overhead of a grocery store, right? right? There's not a building, there's not property taxes, there's not cleaning, there's none of those things. There's just me, my computer, my microphone, and, you know, <laughs> and the internet connection, and I'm pretty much set, right? So that means that a very small number of clients can give me a life that I can live comfortably in, you know, right. and, and if I want to scale that and become a multimillionaire, like some of the famous guru types that we know, I could, you know, I could do that if I, I you know, that opportunity is there. It's just a matter of just doing more and more of what I'm doing. And right. um, so I think that's the other thing that ha people have a hard time with, right? Like it's like the mailman, the mailman only delivered three pieces of mail a day he'd be, you know, he'd be saying, well, how I can't, I, they're not going to keep me, they're going to, they're going to retire me, they're going to furlough me, they're going to lay me off, if that's all the work I have. Whereas for us, if we have those three letters a day to deliver, we make a good living. And I think that's one of the things that people, that's the paradigm shift that a lot of people have a hard time with, right? It's like, you got to deliver, you know, 200 pounds of mail a day, or else it's not worth it. And for us, it's like, well, that's that old paradigm, the, you know, the industrial revolution stuff. And we're in a new pair. We still need, you know, people that are willing to go into factories and make stuff and sue, you know, sew stuff and everything else, because we are dealing in elect electrons, right? We're not dealing in, you know, walls, you know, thank right. goodness there's somebody that still likes to put up walls and roofs and everything else. So we have places to stay. And so we're not going to be having everybody in the world do what we do, but, you know, certainly if you want to do it, there's lots of room. Well, I think there's room for everybody now. And, you know, they've been doing a push the last couple of years. I mean, I, I'm more aware than some people. I've, my son just finished college a couple of years ago. My daughter's almost finished. So in the last six years, I've been doing this whole college thing. Right. And my son actually dropped out of college. And I mean, oh. you You've heard, I think you've heard this story. You know, he's, he's Einstein, his IQ, he's off the charts. So he went to college, he went to the wrong school, he didn't get good grades because he didn't go to class. And he ended up working for a year doing this thing and didn't like it. So he said he's gonna find another job, he did. Now he works for, a, I don't wanna say it, but a major insurance company, working in the annuities department. He's got a great salary, great benefits. He's the youngest one to ever pass the test. He's like six levels up from where he started. And he's just like, just zooming, taking off. He found, he found his place. So nice. just a semester, he's now gone back to school because they'll pay for his school. So he's gone back to school doing online. And he figures in two years, he'll graduate with his degree. In another two years, he'll end up with an MBA. But by his wow. work and the, the tests he's passed, he skipped like eight classes that he has to take in college to get the degree he's going after. Nice. So do you have to go to college? You don't. Do you have to? You don't. You know, plumbers don't have to go to college and they make they can make a good living and right. toilets are not going to go away. No matter That's how right. big the world is, electricity is not going to go away. You know, yeah. there's going to be more and more demand. Yeah. So I think and there are those people that want to install solar panels who are on the cutting edge of electricity are not the people that are going to be doing what you and I do. They're just not. That's right. That's right. You know, you know you're right. Like, 
everybody has their own personalities, right? And yeah. not everybody wants to, you know, sit in front of a computer for a certain number of hours a day. They want to get out and be, you know, climbing poles and stringing wires across. And they should. And they should. Absolutely. Right. That's the beauty of it. Like find what you love and just do it. And I, I, I think this whole thing is really opening people's eyes up to what's really possible. You know, Jen does yoga every day with this lady on YouTube. She's got 5 million subscribers. She's been doing it for years. And this lady's built up a following over the years. 5 million people are subscribed to her YouTube channel doing yoga. Now, I don't do yoga, but I'm sometimes in the room and I listen to it. This, this lady is excellent at, okay, take your left hand, put your palm down, roll up on your fingers. I mean, she explains everything in detail. I can be in the next room and I can hear it, and I know exactly what to do. You know, but she's been doing this for years and has honed those skills. Yeah. Somebody just started out with yoga, misses three of the five points because pe she's people watching her and doing it. So the right. skills that you have to learn are different to transfer the same knowledge, but it's still possible. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about one of your loves, and that is video. And uh, I want to start off. So what I did is I went to, I found you on Medium. So I thought, well, let's just look at some of these articles. So <clears throat> one article is proof of authority in your industry videos and their importance. Uh, proof of authority in your industry videos and their importance. So first of all, what's proof of authority and why is it important that people in all, I'm going to say all businesses, create these types of videos? Okay, let's, let's go back to the plumber example. Let's say you're a plumber. Let's say you're in a town of 40,000 people. There's going to be quite a few plumbers in that town, right? Yep. Who, who's the best plumber? Who's the horrible plumber? Because they're all the best, and and Scott's the worst. Okay. So if you're great, you know, if you get some testimonials, your proof of authority is your testimonials. Um, are you certified to do certain plumbers have to go through all kinds of certification training, including right. knowing how to draw pipe, CAD diagrams, and that kind of stuff. So if you're a journeyman plumber. You know how to do CAD drawings. If you're a apprentice plumber, you don't. And if you just started working with your dad and the run a, run a shotgun in the truck, you don't even know how to spell CAD. So, right. The proof of authority. When I get someone to come to my house, if it's just cleaning out the trap under this kitchen sink because I don't want to do it, that's one skill level. If you're rebuilding a house because your house flooded and you've got to redo stuff, you want somebody that's going to really understand and know. Like where we live in Pennsylvania, they used to use copper pipe. Then they realized the alkaline in the soil there disrupted the copper piping. Oh. So they started using PVC. Well, people think PVC is cheap. PVC actually lasts longer than copper pipe. So knowing that and you start proving that and you start talking to people, but you need social proof for that and you need to show your authority for that. And if you can create videos around that, like why do I use PVC versus this? Because in this area, this is why you do it. So now you're not just saying, I can come fix your stopped up drain for less than the other guy you're gonna call. We're right. 24 hour right. service. We can fix anything. I, I, so what, you fix anything. But so what yeah, do you if you're the same as everybody, then, you're, then why would I pick you versus someone else? Right, right. Now, so that, that, that's the being the authority. But the big thing that I work with people on is how does the plumber end up looking good or knowing what to say on video so that he shows he has that authority and not having his son who's in the AV class in high school grab his iPhone and shoot a video of dad talking about how good he is. Right. So there's the difference. And it's you don't have to go hire a big production crew, but you do need to understand some of – the other basic, some of the things that people do, some of the things people really want to show what that authority is. Right. Yeah, I often tell people who are who are trainers and they're a little bit worried about giving away all their knowledge is uh, there is a difference between knowing something and then doing it well. Yeah. <laughs> and so you can read the book, you can watch the video, and then you can – you know, so I've watched a plumbing video, you know, me who knows right. basically not even which way to hold the wrench. 
and I've read a couple books on it. So now there's a leak under the sink and I'm going to go look after it. And anybody in the build, everybody in the building is leaving because they're pretty sure I'm going to destroy the whole place by the time <laughs> I'm done. So yeah. having, having somebody that's, so actually this guy actually came up with today. One of my clients emailed me and he said, Scott, what do you think of this idea? And he copied and pasted an email somebody sent him. And the email basically said, do this and this and this and this and this, and then uh, put them on you Facebook, almost said YouTube, and you'll be able to get five, you'll be able to spend $5 a day. Now he didn't say $5 a day is gonna get you one person or gonna get you 10,000 people or anything, right? And I said, I said to him, I've, I've uh, read these type of emails for 20 years. And, <laughs> and, you know, and I know two things. One is it's not as easy as he said. <laughs> and the other one is I don't know if it'll work for you. So because you'd have to actually get that person and say, okay, this is my industry. This is my project. This is who right. I am. Are these things going to, you know, and then what do we do, right? And too often we think all sizes fit all. And and I said, you know, so it was kind of this sort of the same thing, right? It's like how, it's one thing to have an idea, it's another thing to implement the idea. And if you've never done it before and you have the opportunity to work with someone who's done it for 10, 20, 30 years, like you said, 10,000 hours, then all the little um, danger points, let's just say, or places where you could trip get pointed out long before you actually get there so you don't have to worry about those things. Yeah, it's, it's just cut into the chase. It's the short circuit. It's, you know, do, do you want to go sit in class with 30 people for six months or do you want a tutor to come in two weeks? Right, right. You know, it, it's it's so much of that. And so much of, of like great, good video is not the gear whatsoever. It has nothing to do with the gear. I mean, do you sound good? You do. Guess what sounding good is? Sounding good is being in a quiet place, so there's no tracking noises. Right. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of things about sounding good that are not to do with the microphone. Do I think a good microphone is great to have? Oh, I do. I, absolutely, I do. For sure. You want to have the tools. But yeah. if you don't know how to use the tool, it doesn't matter. Right. So to get started, you don't even need the tools. There's ways to work around that. Yeah. yeah, because we're you said we don't need tools, but that's because we already have all these things that have cameras and we can point right. and push, push the thing, right? Yeah, it. I just think that people make, make it more complicated than it needs to be, and people expect results that they don't, that they aren't going to have. So actually, one, uh, go ahead. Well, actually, I posted, um, I've got an ebook out, and I posted it on LinkedIn today. And I said, your Zoom calls are not going to win you an Academy Award, but they're not supposed to. Right. You know, a Zoom call is meant to get you more business so that you can create more revenue. You need to look, you don't expect to be Meryl Streep on a Zoom call. You're not going to do it. Yeah. And so that mindset of, you know, we all think, oh, wait, you, because my big thing is, you know, do a take if you don't like it, delete it and do it again. What? But I recorded it. Yes, you did. 50 takes with Kevin Costner one time for him to say three three words. Let me tell you, sometimes wow. you have to do it over and over and over. It wasn't all his fault. There was background, there were cars, there was fish flying. It was his whole ordeal. And there was a discussion from the agency about how do you say those three words? Which emphasis is the word on? I mean, it was a whole block. But yeah, 50 takes with Kevin Costner. 50 takes. Wow. So one question that people come up with to me with all the time is, well, what am I going to talk about on the video? And you, you, you have a couple articles on, uh, on Medium about questions. So how would you use questions to create videos? Uh, this is like the simplest thing ever. And I wish I could say it was my idea, but I actually stole, I, I probably stole this at the conference that you and I were at together when we first met, which was years ago now. Yes. But um, I'll, I'll give I'll give props to the person that said it because it was Mike Koenig who says, "What are the ten questions people ask you most about your business?" Right, and that to me was like, you know, and then there's the follow up is what are the ten questions people should ask you? Yeah, about your business, right? So I mean, without getting too far into the into the weeds of your business, 
those are the simplest questions to answer right away, and they work across the board. You know, yeah. and they're not questions you think they are. You really have to start listening to what people ask you and write it down, because we are all the forest and the trees in our own business. That's true. That's so true. When mm -hmm. I first started this video thing, you know, I'm like going, oh, and then you just, and Jen's like, what do you just? I don't understand what just means. You have to explain this to me. And she's a great person for me to bounce off of because she knows nothing about video. And she's not technical at all. And she does the and, 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 and she's the perfect sounding board for me. And now I've figured out how to really break it down into simple terms. Right. You want to you want to move your f-stop down, and you want to get your aperture to a certain degree, and you're like what? I just want to point yeah. my camera and push record. Well, and that's honestly that's part of the reason why everybody's on YouTube pushing that. How do you how do you get the proper angle for three point lighting? You put a light, light, and you put a light. You know, it, I I don't have to think about that, but. And for me, to explain that is a lot of effort and a lot of work. But instead, it's really more about what's the message you're trying to say, who you're trying to reach, who's the audience. Create three different videos for three different things. If you look at conventional advertising, Ford takes the F-150 truck and they advertise payload, family comfort, and towing power. They don't put all that in one. That's three different videos. And 30-second videos, okay? But right. that's... But that's how they're using it to market because they know the attention span. And for somebody who's looking at the family, is not the same person looking at towing power always. Right, right. So each one of those features has benefits for a different segment of the market. And you're going to turn off the other segments if you try to put them all in one. Yeah, I was talking to a couple. To have, what you're saying is you need to have a single focus message for each video. Yeah, I was talking to a chiropractor one time. I do a fair amount of work with chiropractors. And I was talking to this guy, and he, I said, you got to do sciatic pain on video, but you need to do one for pregnant moms, one for old people, one for athletes, one for, he goes, but it's all lower back pain. I treat it the same. I said, but the audience doesn't care about that. If you right. show sciatic pain with an old person, the pregnant mom doesn't care, even though you're treating it the same. It's about the viewer. It's not about you. And that's yeah. the hardest thing for people to understand is it has nothing to do with you and your knowledge and your skills. It has everything to do with their perception of their problem and how to solve their problem. That's right. So me, for example, if I see him working with a teenager on the teenager's back pain, I mean, see, you know, the teenager is playing football, got hit the wrong way, has got a sore back. That's not me. So right. I'm going to go find some guy that can help me because obviously he helps teenagers, not right. seniors. Right. And that's, that is a really important message that most people, I'm just thinking about my clients now and how that applies to them. <laughs> but none of that has anything to do with the microphone or the F stops or, or what camera model did you get? Or do you have the 14 millimeter lens with the two thirds mirror? Or do you have this or do you have none of that? that that's what I'm saying. It's not right. that the camera don't matter. I mean, come yeah. on. I, I, I worked in Hollywood for 20 years. I'm telling you, the camera matters a lot. But in today's world, when we're talking like this, if I had my $5,000 camera pointed at me and had the special gizmo to go and hooked up to the computer and make it all work in six pieces of gear, I might look a little bit better, but I'm not going to look a ton better to make a difference for this kind right. of interaction. For this kind of thing. Yeah, because... Most people are going to be watching this on their phone, on their iPad, on their computer, like a small box in the corner of the computer yeah. while they're doing something else, right? Right. Uh, not necessarily. So if I'm going to watch Lord of the Rings, one of my favorite movies, I'm going to put it on my big screen TV. Right. If I'm watching us talk about how to make explainer videos, then... I'm going to have it a small corner. I'm going to be listening, probably doing something else. And then when you say, you got to click here and click here and do this, and do, then I'm going to pause, rewind a couple of minutes, and then I'm going to watch because you've hit the, the part where I need to look at what you're doing to, right. to get it. And then it's amazing to me as I'm making courses with people how much of the course is auditory, you know, like, and 
And it brings up an interesting question, right? Because I, my background is all podcasting, which is all auditory. And I listen to very, very few podcasts. But I listen to lots of YouTube videos on the topics I would be listening to podcasts on with the video running. And I'm on the other side, not able to see the video. Like, it's really right. weird. Like, I've thought of this an off a lot. It's like, I need to go and push the play button and see you and see you start talking. And then I ignore you. <laughs> I listen, right? But I don't watch you for the rest of the whole time you're talking unless you say, now you've got, well, I, li I watch a lot of camera. I have an Olympus OMD camera that I have no clue how to use. So I found these Olympus experts because I wanted to make sure when I traveled, I would take good pictures, right? And it takes right. good pictures without anything me doing. Like I just have to point it, have it on autofocus, and it takes a great picture. So I did that for three years. And now it's like, well, I want to take a little bit better picture. So, so now it's like manual this and manual that. And the pictures are terrible. Like I took this right. one guy. He, he, he. Uh, I, we had a beautiful moon last month, right? So on his comments in his YouTube, I says, how, "How do you have a video on how to take a picture of the moon?" And he goes, "Yeah, I do. Go search my channel." So I search his channel. He's got a three-minute video on how to take the picture of the moon. I am ecstatic because I don't have to watch this thing for three hours to figure it out, right? Which right. is what I thought. And so then I go and I follow his directions exactly except for one. And all my pictures are way overexposed, right? So then I figure out it's minus three or minus one, not plus one. And then I take a bunch of really nice pictures of the moon. Well, most, unless it's that sort of thing, I'm not watching. I am, and it's really weird to me. I think, well, why don't I just like listen to a podcast or something? I don't. But when I know, go ahead. Most people don't. Yeah, you know, that's like you know all all the videos. So there's different types of videos. Videos in a, any kind of feed where you scroll is great to have the text on the bottom so people can read along, right? Right. Like on YouTube, do you need that or do you not need that? Because people go to YouTube to watch a video. And in other places, do you need that or do you not need that? You know, so there's these, all these questions about when and where and how to communicate with people as part of because video is is audio and video and it can be text. So you're getting a lot of information if you want it. Right. Right. But, you know, I was having this um, a little back and forth this morning on LinkedIn with somebody else who says the Democratic debates. I mean, not debates. Uh, convention starts tonight. And okay. it was about. She's a writer. She's talking about the speech writer. So normally when speech writers write, they write in on the teleprompter, you know, audience laughs, audience applauds, audience applauds, audience laughs. You know, there's these breaks. You pause and the speaker in front of an audience will pause on purpose. And that's the cue to do this, right? I mean, you, speak right. on stage. you know how that works. But yeah. speaking on video is not the same thing as speaking on stage. Right. And, and the two don't automatically transfer one to the other perfectly. A lot of it does, but not all of it. And so we have discussion about, you know, like, are you going to tune in live? Or are you going to watch the recording of the, of the convention? And somebody said, well, I have to tune in live because I said, that reminds me of like, we used to get home on Thursday nights to watch NBC. You know, that right. was the only choice we had. I hardly ever watch anything live anymore. Yeah, that's true. You know, all Although it's I find it exciting sometimes when I'm because there's a couple of people that I follow and they have all they do is live streams. Well, of course, you can watch the the, re the replay or the, you know, later right. on if you want. But if I happen to be on my iPad when they're live streaming, then it's kind of I feel it's kind of fun to just they're actually talking while I'm actually listening as opposed to, you know, three days later or something like that. It's a, it's it's strange. Well, you lose the context if it's not live. I, I admit that. But we've all become so jaded on, you know, auto webinars, and replays, and all this stuff that sometimes the information is information. Information isn't always live. Time, timely live does not always matter to just getting the information. Yeah, and then we, we're also so used to watching. I was just thinking about entertainers, right? They have a live show, but it's on video, and it's kind of like, why would I go see them live now? I see them on the video and, and it's, I don't have, 
the hassles, right? Like it's, right. it's a it's a it's an interesting change that's occurred over the last really thirty or forty years with the advent of all this technology that we've got because it's really changed how we can interact. I mean, we can interact way more because hey, I'm in Medellin, Colombia, and you're in Playa del Carmen in Mexico, and we're interacting and everything else now live, by the way. Right. <laughs> And it's and that's you know that's the beauty of it, right? Because if we didn't have this technology, would I be picking up my landline phone or telegraphing you, depending on how far back you want to go, right? <laughs> like, what Scott got to say today, Jen? Dot dot dash dot dot. <laughs> <laughs> He's always a man of few dashes. Why does Scott have hay today, Jen? No, say not hay. But that's a double dot, not a single dot. I mean, yeah, I, I'm with you. I don't know. I, th I think the whole technology, I've been in tech doing on the, on the leading edge of technology for a long time. You mentioned the children's books. I was creating interactive children's books on the Palm Pilot before the iPod came out. Wow. And then, and then the iPod came out, the iPhone came out with the iPod, and I was like, what? And so, you know, we developed the, the books over the course of time with that. And we literally – got laughed at the offices of Barnes and Noble, of some of the major publishers in New York, because I was living in Philadelphia at the time. And they were all like, why would we cannibalize our business? Why would we make this digital? What, what, this is stupid. I can't, Barnes and Noble said, we will never have a digital division. That That's just stupid. Why would we do that? We want people to come in our stores and buy our books. And I said, the right. future is gonna be online. You're gonna see the difference. And like a year or two later, they started having on store and they were trying to figure it out hey, because things do change people like the smell of a book yet yeah, the kindle yes. is an amazing tool yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we gave away all 300 books when we moved and we get everything on the kindle now do i still like books i do however right. when i move from location to location get on an airplane whatever in my ipad i've got all of my stuff and there's yeah. something nice about that for my lifestyle. Right. That doesn't work for everybody. And you can still go to a library if you want to actually hold a book wherever you oh, yeah. I mean, in your case, maybe you might have to learn how to read Spanish, but <laughs> the you, yeah. you it's you we kind of have this and opportunity, right? Like I can read a physical book or I can take 500 of my favorite books with me in my Kindle reader. Yeah. You know, and we have the option, whereas before there was, there was no option. And it seemed like a lot of people were, had blinders on like those horse things where yeah. they didn't want to do anything to upset the boat. And the result was the boat sank for many of them. Well, I think that's a lot of what's happening now in the world is all of a sudden the shift has happened. It's been forced on everybody. You know, the whole online school and everything else. Um, Jen has a sister who's got a kindergarten. who's going to be a kindergarten. She starts school next week. How is a kindergartner going to go online and learn and have an impact? I don't know the answer to that. But I also don't haven't read up on it. I'm not versed in kindergartenese these days or anything right. else. But Just I imagine know, a child sitting in one place for an hour. I don't know. Yeah. But yet they can sit in front of a video game for hours. Yeah, that's true. And it's different. But video gaming gets a lot of what they get from things like karate, where you have the belt and the stripes of the belt, the moving up, right? If you right. learn to do kata, you get this advancement. If you get this kata, you get this advancement. So they start kids when they're little, and they get them for three, five, eight years going through the system till they get to the top level. Not every kid wants to be the top level to know how to do karate, they want the black belt. They're going for the prize, not the knowledge. Right. And gaming has done a lot of that. So how are they gonna educate kids? I think there's gonna be a lot of gamification built into education. From them. It's gonna happen, well, so then how does the teacher, I mean, it's really is a kind of a, turn your brain upside down, right? You've got this yeah. one teacher in a room with a camera and you got 30 kids that you're hoping is, you know, Rick, you're not on screen. Get back on screen. <laughs> how, how are they going to, 
Well, um, okay. But, but, but you're assuming there's going to be one teacher, 30 kids, like there is in a physical place. Right. What if instead there's the special play teacher that deals with only with this with 10 kids at a time? And then they switch teachers and they go to this room and they get the math for 20 minutes at a time. But this kid who's having trouble has to go into this other room where there's a different teacher that will explain it on a whiteboard and not just, you know, I think there's going to become a lot of lateral movement within the education process. And the other thing too is, is that we're also used to being live with our teachers, right? right. And the teacher's there, they say this, blah, blah, blah. And we have recordings. So all of a sudden it's Susie's having trouble with math. Mom says, bring up the math lesson from today, sees the 20 minutes of the teacher talking, and then <clears throat> understands it and is able to explain it to, to Susie and she's away to the races. Or you have a remedial class for Susie because Susie can't figure out subtraction. She's okay with addition, but subtraction doesn't work. Well, then just click on here and spend an extra 20 minutes with the subtraction until you get it. It's like, oh. So there the are... Go ahead. All that's going to go. Yeah. That whole education system you just described is all on video. Yeah. Yeah. So there's um there's a really great example in this whole pandemic thing. I don't know if you know Samcart, the company Samcart. They deliver digital goods and they sell things. They're a solid company. The guy who one of the guys, one of the owners, are two brothers, and one of the owners, his kids are young, so they're in dance school. They live outside of DC. And he went to the dance school and said, hey, you can't operate. Why don't we create some videos for you and you can sell them? Well, I mean, they had, the, they had an expert help them, granted. So they created these classes and they did these special promotions to their mailing list. And they ended up making more money in April and May than they've ever made in a single month ever. But they also built it as part of the marketing, part of the funnel was pay for it once, get it forever. So what they're getting is when you go to a dance class, when you're eight years old, you get 45 minutes of step, toe, step, toe, step, toe, and then you leave and that's it. When you buy the class, you get step, toe, step, toe, as often as you want it. Oh, you can get your mom, you can get your grandma, you can get your grandpa. It's bringing this, they, they're finding these dance videos, they've created them so that the whole family is now getting involved. And nice. people are having way more fun and it's the same price, it's actually cheaper price to buy the package of videos than it is to pay per class. Awesome. So, but that's what the guy who understands marketing, who knows how to do video, you know I mean? He's, he's a smart guy, right. 100%. But that's just what's possible. That's really cool. And that really is a good news for the brick and mortars, right? It is. Because they're, they're the ones that are in danger yeah but people are also getting their time back they're not driving they're not they're not doing the mcdonald's drive through because they're late because they had to stay an extra 20 minutes because the meeting ran over at the office to get susie to the ballet class you know there's all yeah. these extra things that are benefits now i also think the socialization pieces are going to be huge and the mentalness of this generation these kids if this, if this goes on for any of the time it's going to be something to really consider Right. Absolutely. People like us, we can adjust. Our life hasn't really changed a whole lot. We go out a little bit less. Right. But, uh, you know, well, other than <laughs> yeah. our everyday well, life has changed drastically. Rick, we've come kind of to the end of our time. I want to tell you, thank you very much for, you know, spending almost 50 minutes now with me. It'll be 50 minutes, I'm sure, before we say, we say sayonara. But, uh, <laughs> Before we go and before you tell people how they can get a hold of you and if they want to know more about, you know, creating videos for their business and how they can create the right type of videos with the right type of content that actually move people to take action, whatever the action you want them to do in your business. Right. Uh, do you have a, I was going to say a video tip, but do you have a general business marketing tip that you want to leave everybody with? Wow. I didn't know, I didn't know you ask me that question. Uh, you know, I think the general tip is something that my dad told me years ago when I was going to move from Baltimore. I was in rock and roll lighting, and I was going to go to L.A. and go do the movie lights. They were just coming into being. This was back in the mid-'80s. 
And I came home and I, I was already living, you know, three hours away from my family. I said, I'm going to move to California. And my mom cried. My sister called me an idiot. My stepfather thought it was the stupidest thing ever. And my father, who had no clue what I did, he said, well, boy, I wish you the best of luck. And I said, well, thanks, Dad. He goes, just remember, the road goes both ways. And I have <laughs> always taken that to mean you can try it. If it doesn't work, you try something else. If that doesn't work, you try something else. You know, we moved to Mexico back. We sold everything to, to, to come to Mexico. I don't want to say we moved to Mexico because technically we haven't even moved here. We're just still here. But we packed up suitcases and a cat, and we got rid of everything we had to travel the world. And we went to Mexico, and we're still here. We haven't really left yet. Right. And because our attitude was, if Mexico doesn't work, we can go somewhere else. Yep. And I think even in business, people are so afraid to take those chances to try something and you got to try it. you got to try it earnest, and you got to try it. But don't, you don't have to spend a lot of money to try it. You can try it and see what kind of results you get and then refine it as you go. You don't have to have that perfect business plan to start. You know? So, Rick, when you left the United States and you went to Mexico, were you in the same – are you now still in the same city? We're still in the same city, yes. We've had three different apartments, but we're in the same city. You know, it turns so out we like it. Yeah, I mean, this is a really interesting way about like because we've both done the same thing. We've left our home countries right. and and everything else. And you 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 went somewhere and you said, well, you know, if we like it, we'll stay. If we don't like it, we'll go someplace else. And you've liked it, so you're staying. And I want to find a place that I like to stay too. But my I'm I have kind of the I don't want to say the opposite attitude or or way of going about it, but I want to go check out all these places first and then decide afterwards, right? So I'm hopping to Costa Rica and Panama and Colombia and Ecuador and Peru and Morocco and Kenya, and I'm going to all these places. And it was just like, it just sort of strongly like, oh yeah, they want to travel the world. And then they found some place they like, and then they stay. And that's like, this is a blinding flash of the obvious to me. It's like, huh, what if I found a place that I liked? Would, I can't stay because I've got a whole bunch of other places on my list to go to. So we have different ways of looking at the same situations, right? Which brings us back to you know, the whole videos and everything else is like, you're the type of person that you are, or the type of person I am, or the type of person the listener or watcher is, right. will attract a different type of person. We all have attract our own different tribes, right? Yeah, our, our goal was to get out of the cold weather to come to palm trees and beaches. I love I love living in L.A. There's no doubt about it. And moving to Pennsylvania was not the smartest move I could have ever made. For the reasons we did it, I, I have no regrets. But it wasn't the smartest move to ever make. And part of that was there was the beaches and palm trees were just gone. I, I lived, you know, at the beach basically in L.A. for 15 of those 20 years. Almost wow, 15 nice. of 20 years. I mean, I was able to, you know, either block from the beach or eight blocks from the beach. So I, I enjoyed that. I had a Jeep with no doors and no top. I loved it. And, you know, that is just me. And yep. so when it was time to move, it was like, okay, let's, let's go here. Fine. If we don't like it, we'll go somewhere else. Turns out this is, this is a great place. It's very international. There's people from everywhere here. Once you get over, it's not just a tourist city. You know, there are real people yes. here doing real businesses with real incomes, with real backgrounds that are that are like you, that are traveling around. But they'll come here for three months, six months, a year, two years. That's very transient. And, you know, there's two of us, so that, that kind of determines some of the travel. And we also have a cat. So right. that also determines some of the travel. But really, we haven't gotten itchy feet yet being here. That's wonderful. You found you know, your sweet spot. Yeah, how long will we be here? I don't know. We don't. We don't know. You know, we've, we've go back and forth. We think about other things, and then we just kind of keep living here because it's very comfortable here. Also, for us, yeah, it's right. safe. It's not dangerous. It's I won't say it's cheap because we're in one of the most expensive cities in Mexico, but it's a, it's a very affordable. Right. And it's so expensive in Mexico and expensive in New York are two different things. Very different things. But what we've also found is that, you know, our the quality of our clients, we are we can be picky about it. We can choose who we can not go for the tire kickers. We're not trying to just get everybody in the door just so we can make 20 bucks, you know, right. because we've got 
to, it's just, it's a different attitude about it. Nice. Nice. But yeah, we, we found a nice place and, you know, I highly recommend it. I'm, I'm like the biggest cheerleader for Mexico there is. <laughs> well, Mexico is on my list and, and seeing you and Jen again is at the top of my list when I come to Mexico. So um, I'm looking forward well, to that whenever it happens. But in the beginning, you're talking about the hammock thing. And every time somebody says something, we go, oh, yeah, we had this guy who came and stayed with us for a week. And, yeah, he was doing his calls on the hammock on the balcony. And he actually he created a course for you to me on the balcony on the hammock. And that's and right. Like, he did what? And I was like, yeah, we can. Yeah, we know a guy. Yeah. If there's anybody in the world that knows how much I love hammocks, it's you <laughs> and Jim. That's, I just flash. I just flash back to sitting on that hammock. That was so fun. And then the cat. The cat would be visiting me and be right there. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, okay. So Rick, if someone wants to get a hold of you, what should they do? Oh yeah. Okay. So there's two ways to get hold of me. The easy, the, the simplest way is it's shootbettervideo.com. S H O O T bettervideo.com. Uh, that's my website, and it's overloaded with everything, but it's got everything there. There's another thing that I uh, just put out a couple of weeks ago that's still fine tuning uh, all the pieces to it. But I've got this ebook called Five, Five No Cost Tips to How to Look Like a Pro in Your Videos. And it really breaks things down the five tips plus a bonus tip, which is bonuses about the camera height because you want to be eye level with people. Uh, but the five tips, and you can get that at um, www bit.ly at t.ly forward slash five dash tips dash ebook. Five and I, dash tips dash ebook. Yeah. And I can send you these links if you want. But it, those two things, I mean, but if you go to my website, it's got everything there. It's got my background, the 40,000 hours in Hollywood, what I've been doing since I left Hollywood. It's just, it's, it's a packed full thing to do. I was bored one month and created it. Was learning how to use a website builder. Awesome. So actually, I forgot I could do this. I just, by the way, we're also live streaming on Periscope for the first time. I just figured out how to do that. And we're also on YouTube and we're also on Facebook. And then here's your video, shoot better video. I mean, here's your website, shoot better video. Excellent. Yeah, and awesome. any, anybody has, you know, I'm, I'm, I do a lot of consulting with people because people just don't understand, and it's so, it's so not complicated. Awesome, Rick. Thank you very much for being so generous with your time today. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate you and Jen. Say hi to Jen for me, by the way. Well, she said hi. And we'll keep in touch, and we'll see you next time. And thank you, everybody, for joining us. This has been Internet Marketing Unleashed, and we'll see you next time too. Bye for now.